Welcome to The Teach, where we're going to go through what you need to know to bring Heroes Wanted to your table. In Heroes Wanted, we are wannabe superheroes trying to gain enough influence and attention to get noticed by the champions of Zeta City. You win a game of Heroes Wanted by gaining the most fame, and you're competing with all wannabe superheroes fighting crime on the streets of Zeta City. I love Heroes Wanted because every single time we play this game, you have some amazing stories that really make you laugh and think about why we play board games in the first place. So let's jump into the teach. Using the rules to set up the board game for the first time, you'll actually be setting up your own first scenario. In this scenario, we're playing the first scenario, littering, loitering, and jaywalking. In this scenario, we're actually gonna be trying to beat down the boss before he runs away and pick up all the trash and henchmen he leaves behind. When we go through setup, we're actually gonna be creating our hero and our villain. Every player is gonna have their own hero and that's denoted by the hero A and the hero B cards. In this example, I am Turbo Feet and my catchphrase is zoom zoom, kick it. Once each player has created their hero, we're gonna create the villain, much in the same way we're going to be listing and selecting a hero B and a hero A. In our example, we have Professor Jock, whose catchphrase is, I have a PhD in carnage. Nice costume, dork. And in this game, we're going to be dealing damage equal to his villain HP. Through the game, we're also going to be trying to achieve each of the headlines, and they are actually going to score us extra points, which we'll go through a bit later. In a round of Heroes Wanted, we're going to be playing a card from our hand. This is called the Hero Phase. Every player is going to take one turn until it gets back to the first hero. Choosing a card from our hand, we'll play that card and resolve it. When we play a card, we resolve each action based on the text within the card as well as any special bonuses. These cards actually go into our discard pile, and once we've run out of cards in our hand, we actually have to take a turn to actually rest and get all of those cards back into our hand. If at any time we are attacked by another player or the villain, we actually have to use cards in our hand to defend that damage. And that's where these points at the top actually tell us how much damage we're able to defend against. And we'll go through that a bit more in the villain phase. On the villain phase, Follow the instructions based on the scenario you're in. And in this one, the villain moves next sequential numbered space. So they're gonna move from seven to eight. We're then going to move the icon up. And because it's not a yellow space, they're not gonna leave any trash for us to pick up. From there, the villain is going to attack. So. The villain is not next to me and they don't have any ranged attack so they're not going to deal any damage to me but this underling is right next to me and that underling is going to do one damage to me so from my hand i had no cards discarded because i had just taken a rest i'm going to choose a card and my lowest is charge this is defending three i'm not going to take any damage if at any time i had no cards in my hand to defend this damage I would actually take an injury token. This will go onto my board and will affect my fame in a later turn. So let's go through an example round. It is my turn and I'm not currently the first hero because someone else has taken that from me. So I'm actually gonna activate my superpower on my card. My superpower is to move two and deal five damage to a character within range one. I also become the first hero. So I'm gonna move over to here. I'm gonna take the first hero and you can see that underlings have four health points and henchmen have five health points. So in this example, I've already got two henchmen and five underlings, but one of the goals is to actually kill six underlings. So in this example, I could have actually killed a henchman, but I want that underling, I'm gonna deal five damage and it kills it with the four HP. 
I'm then actually going to get to activate my ability. By taking one of these cards, I'm gonna place my headline and that removes and activates my mutant power as denoted by this card here. My mutant power is to move four and deal two damage to the villain. I'm already next to the villain, so I'm gonna deal two damage to them. And that is my turn. We have extra functions that we can actually undertake on these, such as gaining our surge card, an extra card to add to our hand. We can also retrieve our mutant action or retrieve two actions from our discard. We also have our quirk card, and this is quite an interesting. So for instance, mine is fiber. After a hero completes a headline, you must convincingly tell an outrageous lie. So if I fail to have told that lie in this example, I would actually get called out by my friends and I would go up too. But how this would play out in real life is as I would remember, I'd go, man, you've killed six, but I've killed 12 underlings. And that makes sure that my quirk is always fulfilled. From here, we'll actually pass the turn to the next player. Once all players have gone back to the start, we will then go into the villain phase and we repeat the cycle. And that is how we play Heroes Wanted. Make sure you actually check out our board game bar where we made the Wham! A drink that we've chose to pair perfectly with this game. We're also going to be playing this game live on Twitch, so hit us up on our social media channels below. If you missed our live session, we're actually going to be adding it as a video on demand down here after. We've got a lot of games and videos were made, so make sure you check out our board game bars and teachers. But until next time, we'll see you in the next video. Bye.